<laughs> Welcome, my friends. Woo, we're back in another math video. It's the beginning. You know what? It's like you have this huge Sunday. Oh, yeah. A banana split. Mm -hmm. Just right there. Fresh bananas, ice cream. You got your pineapple, chocolate syrup. Oh, my goodness. You know what? Maybe we might have to put a hold on this video. I need to go get some ice cream. <laughs> Look at here, my friends. We have less than 9.5. Woohoo! Yeah, we're cruising through chapter 9. And our topic today, Mr. Wara, well, I'm glad you asked. It's numerical patterns. Woo! Sounds like we might be doing some things with sequence here. Yeah. And the essential question? That's right, Mr. Wara. Our learning target today is how can you identify a relationship between two numerical patterns? Uh, a relationship? Really? With numbers, you mean? Oh, with numbers, of course. How can you identify, to name, a relationship between two numerical patterns? Okay, this definitely sounds like sequence. But you know what, my friends? We cannot move any further unless we unlock the problem. That's right, my friends. Real world, baby. Real world. Real world. Now, it says on the first week of school, Joel purchases two movies and six songs from his favorite media website. If he purchases the same number of movies and songs each week, how does the number of songs purchased compare to the number of movies purchased from one week to the next? That's right, my friends. This is about sequence. Yeah, I can just feel it. Now, what should we do next? We have the purple box. Step one. I'm so confused. Help. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, sorry. Underdog is here. Yes. How many movies does Joel purchase each week? Yes, that's information from the problem. And it says that he purchases two movies. Two of them. Dos películas. Okay, for those Spanish speakers out there. Okay, two movies. Okay, how many songs does Joel purchase each week? Well, it's in the problem. It's right there. Six songs. Or if you prefer, seis canciones. Okay, all right. Hey, and what are we doing? A Spanish lesson here today, Mr. Warrow? Now it says, step one. Use the two rules given in the problem to generate the first four terms in the sequence for the number of movies and the sequence for the number of songs. Woo, slow down. Yeah, put on the brakes, my friend. That was too much. So, two rules. There's two rules. Mr. Warrow, I think if you just keep following the example, you'll see that it's pretty easy. Okay, all right, okay. That's my executive producer. It sounds just like me, I know. All right, let's take a look. So the sequence for the number of movies each week is... Okay, they're saying two, and then plus two, I guess you're going to put four, and then six, and eight. Is there a trick? That seems really easy. That's the sequence. Okay, and the sequence for the number of songs each week is six well plus six twelve eighteen twenty four okay again is there a trick because if this lesson got any easier i tell you what cavemen would be teaching the class <laughs> anyways sorry i just had to laugh at my own joke oh look at this guy with his what is that an ipod very cool boy he's a happy camper yeah look it's probably brand new yeah, got it for Christmas or something. $239. Oh my goodness, what a great gift you received there, my friend. Wow, jamming out. Cool. All right, well, that's right, yeah. We do have to kind of get back on the math lesson, so sorry. We, uh, you were famous for a few seconds. Okay, step two. It says write number pairs that relate to the number of movies to the number of songs. Oh, I see. Ooh, this is getting really tricky now. I'm thinking week one is two, six, because that was the first two numbers in that sequence. Does that mean week two would just be, yeah, wouldn't that just be, then we would take our four and do four and then 12, like the ordered pair. I think I'm getting this. And then for week three, wouldn't that just be six and then 18? Ooh, yeah. And how about week four? Well, it's the last two numbers right there, eight and 24. We call them number pairs. Yes. Cool. All right. Now we come down to step three. I have to admit, my producer was correct. This did get easier as we did the steps. So imagine that, Mr. Wara, huh? Doing them in order. Mm. For each number pair, compare the number of movies to the number of songs. Write a rule to describe this relationship. 
Okay. And oh, they're even giving us a little think. Think. For each related number pair, the second number is blank times as great as the first number. Ooh, I feel like somebody's over there giving me a secret. Okay. Okay. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Okay. For each related number pair, the second number is blank times. So I have to be times. So two and six. Ooh, that would be three times greater. But is that true for two? Oh, yeah, because four times three is 12. Is that working for... And week three is six times three is 18. Eight times three is 12. Oh. I think I found the secret. Yes, I'm going to say that that is going to be three times as great as the first number. So the rule, <laughs> multiply by three. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. I got it. Yep. Now, it says, so from one week to the next, the number of songs Joel purchased is three times as many as the number of movies purchased. Okay, making some sense. Yeah. Page master. Oof. Yeah. What do we have here, Mr. War? It looks like we have ourselves an example. That's right. It says when Alice completes each level in her favorite video game, she wins three extra lives and six gold coins. What rule can you write to relate the number of gold coins to the number of extra lives she has won at any level? How many extra lives will Alice have won after she completed eight levels? Oh my goodness. Let's take a look. We have ourselves a rule here, a rule there, add this, add that. Ooh, looks really confusing. But I think what's most important here when we look at this, because it can be a lot to try to read that whole problem, and then because it's all coming at you at exactly the same time. It's like a snowblower, you know? Because I lived where there was snow, and that snow would just, you know, get right in your face. Although it's kind of fun sometimes. But anyway, and you feel like, hey, I'm getting blasted. So rather than feel that way, take the problem and just unpack it like piece by piece. Go back, say, hey, I'm going to read it again. If it says that she completes each level in her favorite video game, if she gets three extra lives and six gold coins at, for each level, it kind of sets it up. Because you look at our table, look at that. Once you get to the first level, she wins three extra lives and six gold coins. You see in the level two, look at, we're adding three to the six. We're adding another three from the six to the nine, a three to the nine to the 12. You see the pattern already? And then you look at the gold coins. We're going six, 12, 18. And those are really, in, those are multiples. That's what those are. So if you look at that, then you can see right here, this is going to be add three. I just said that. And this is going to be add six because we're adding three plus three, right? Right here. And then we're going plus three, just like the one on the previous page. The same thing with six. So here, we're going to be multiplying by blank or divide by blank. Well, if we have 48, you can look at this as you can look at it this way. You can think of that each level is being multiplied by three. Because on this last one here, four times three is 12. So that would mean on level five, and I'm just going to put five in here. Number five is being multiplied by three which is going to give us 15. And that follows the pattern of adding three. However, it has the blue arrow going up. So it's in comparison of the 48. So in that case, I'm going to say since six here is double three, it's double every one. We have 18 and nine, 24 and 12. So in this case, 48 could be, if we were to divide that by two, that would get us 24. That would still be true because 8 times 3 is 24. But what will we multiply by? Well, in order to multiply, if we're referring to the arrow, you'd have to multiply by 1 half. Okay? We're dividing by 2 or multiply by 1 half. We're making this into two equal groups, which would be 24. Okay? But if you multiply it by 1 half, that's 1 half of 48, which is 24. Okay? I hope that makes some sense. I could see where this would be a little bit more confusing the way that they show this, but the more you look at the patterns, and that's the key thing. Did we answer all the questions? What rule can you relate to? We did that. Number of lives. How many extra lives will Alice have one after she completes eight levels? We did all of that. Now, step one says, to the left of the table, complete the rule for how you could find the number of extra lives one from one level to the next. No, we kind of already did that. And this here, oh my goodness, I don't think this could be any easier. Remember, we already learned. We were just adding three. Did I do the whole problem up there again? <laughs> You know, I don't know. When I look at that, I just start working away. And so anyway, consecutive terms, we talked about that in a row, terms that are like in a row. And the difference means subtract. 
okay? So we're subtracting those terms that are in a row, and that's what we did. 3 minus 0 is 3. 6 minus 3, see? So from one level to the next, Alice wins actually three more extra lives. So step two says to the left of the table, complete the rule for how you could find the number of gold coins one from one level to the next. So yes, I did. I, I, went, I went ahead again. So we're just adding six. It's just that they had that table way up there at the top, and I started working away. So she wins six more gold coins. Okay. So this would probably be good if so this would probably be good if you struggle a little bit of my explanation up at the top. Seeing this kind of scaffold step by step might be easier if that made, did make sense to you up there. Write number of pairs that relate the number of gold coins to the number of extra lives won at each level. Okay, so level one was six, three. So the next time it was 12, right? That's why I don't even have to look up there because I already realized they're adding by six. So that's 18, and then 24, 12. Now step four says complete the rule to the right of the table that describes how the number of pairs are related. Use your rule to find the number of extra lives at level eight. So it says, Tank. For each level, the number of extra lives is blank as great as the number of gold coins. I think we determined that that was one half, didn't we? Yeah, one half as great as the number of gold coins. If the lives were six and the gold coins was 12, so it's one half of. So the rule is going to be, which we put up there already, <laughs> multiply by one half, okay, or divided by two, or just divide by two, or divide by two. So after eight levels, Alice will have one, and we determined it was 24 extra lives. Okay, math talk. Explain how your rule would change if you were relating extra lives to gold coins instead of gold coins to extra lives. So if they were like reversed. Well, it would change because now we'd be multiplying the number of extra lives by two because the number of gold coins would be two times the number of extra lives. So for each level, it's just like the opposite. So that's how that would change by flipping those two around. Guess what, my friends? It's the end to another math video. I know. When we were talking about how it just started, look, it, it's already over. Boof. Now, my friends, live long and prosper.